as the next one, we can have a look at how we can use uh, gRPC with Kotlin coroutines. Okay. So, so let's do that now. Let's have a look. Um, for that, I will create a, or we can upgrade our uh, service. Um, we still will use the, the mutiny stuff. Mm -hmm. um, at least here for the API, we need to use that. But we want to uh, get uh, Kotlin coroutines. Um, first, we need to, er, first a disclaimer, this is not directly supported by Quarkus. Mm -hmm. uh, so we need to work around it a bit. And for that, uh, we need some classes from other parts of Quarkus. And uh, we need access to uh, Kotlin coroutine stuff from Vertex directly. Mm -hmm. uh, so we need to add these two dependencies. And then we can uh, write a small service. Um, so in the end, we still need to return this uni here. Mm -hmm. That's something we just cannot get around. Um, let's put this down here for reference. Um, but what we um, would really like to do is we want to uh, have a coroutine and then return it as a uni. Um, we can do that by launching a, co um, a coroutine. For example, just to write it down for now with this, global scope async, and then as a uni, we can return this. So here we could uh, put our uh, egress product ID and uh, to response return and blow the arrow, row, and what is your complain? Required uni found type mismatch. So, ah, so when I write return here, it means the return for this function mm -hmm. and not the return of this block. Oh, okay. If I want to have the return of this block, I need to uh, write it like this. Again, the scoping. Mm -hmm. um, but you, you can also do inside of such a block, you can just, the last statement <clears throat> is used as the return value. Always the last? Or yeah, can always I the last. I only do it if, it if I have one statement in there? No, no, you can uh, have more like, uh, well, something. Okay. So it's always the last. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So... Basically, we now have get product by ID, mm -hmm. make it to response or throw an exception. Perfect. Um, so, uh, unfortunately, we don't want to run it on the uh, global scope. <laughs> um, ideally, we would um, want it to run on a dedicated coroutine scope. Mm -hmm. uh, even better, we would like to run it if we don't block on the vertex event loop. Okay. Um, and we can actually do that if we um, get Vertex and the uh, coroutine scope from Quarkus. So what we can do is we can inject the current the application coroutine scope from REST Easy Reactive. Uh, unfortunately, that's in that package there <laughs> um, because there they needed it and they don't have a global coroutine support yet. Um, so I use it from there and uh, from Vertex directly. And what we can then do is uh, we can use, instead of the global scope, we can use that coroutine scope to start it and we dispatch it onto the vertex dispatcher. That's something we need to write. And now it should work. Um, yes, oops. Then, so that's 
<coughs> same. Uh, I need to close some tabs. Just cleaning up with the naming uh, so I don't get confused too much. Um, you see here, this is yellow because this is uses inside a experimental coroutines API. So we will need to, to add a uh, annotation for that, that we want to use that uh, to get rid of a warning, but uh, we will do that later. So we started it and hopefully we get an error for the shoe three. And we get not found for shoe two. Shouldn't we get a uh, shoe two? Yeah, shoe two also. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so basically the same behavior as before. Same behavior as before. Yes. So now we can also extract that and make it a bit nicer because probably you want to have this in many functions mm -hmm. <laughs> and then you don't want to repeat yourself here. Yeah. Uh, so what we can do is we can uh, create a service vertex it's just a name mm -hmm. um, we need these two that we put in here and now we will define a function uh, also just for the lack of a better name this is a function where we will put in a block that we will want to run as a coroutine. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have a suspend coroutines go. That's what we need to name it, that it works directly. Um, and it should return a uni. Um, yes. And here now we do basically the same that we did before. The coroutines go async uh, with the vertex dispatcher. And, and uh, in that we execute a block. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Block. Block. And as uni. And here we can now also add the opt in. We opt into this experimental API. So that you have uh, to, to annotate with that experiment? It removes the warning. Oh, okay. Um, because uh, Kotlin wants to make sure this is an experimental API, mm -hmm. this is okay. volatile, might change still. So if you want to use it already, mm -hmm. you should opt in or have okay. a warning that you are aware. Okay. That's, that's the only reason. So maybe in one or two Kotlin versions, this is no longer needed mm -hmm. for this. Um, so basically, this service uh, just uh, executes every block it gets in that coroutine space. Yes. Um, private val vertex coroutine scope provider. And what we now can do is up here, vertex is uni. And then we get rid of this. And we have actually a function that looks like something reasonable. So that's basically the whole function is the block. Yes. Which uh, is yeah. passed to yeah. the. Yeah. You can, in. If, oh, okay. if you directly call something that's mm. containing a block, you can use this. Uh, so in Kotlin, if you have a single line function, basically, uh, something um, return ABC, uh, we need a return type then you can also write it like this. It's just a short mm -hmm. notation for mm -hmm. single line functions. And this function here does nothing else than calling this function with, the with something else, yeah. but it's just a parameter. Mm -hmm. And because we have this notation here, then it you can just put it in there okay. and it looks pretty clean. Yeah, nice. And it's a way, mm -hmm. I, I don't need to see this. Yeah. If I can shrink my screen, I don't even have it on the screen. <laughs> right. And then you have here some nice looking code. Um, and you directly see here, 
I know what I'm doing. I mm. get the product by ID, I make it to a response, or I throw an error. This is much cleaner to yeah, me. You just put all the dispatching stuff uh, out of your site. So to yeah. Say. Uh, of course, we need to. And it's reusable this. for every. Yes. Function. So that should work now as before. Yes, that should work as before. Like this. Or oh, this, not found. Perfect. And here, uh, now that we have uh, Kotlin coroutines, uh, we can also use it in the product by ID. So, for example, we can make this a coroutine. And we can call other coroutines that might, instead of blocking mm -hmm. um, calls, they, they can suspend. Um, for example, if we have something that delays, then this is not blocking mm -hmm. the thread. So um, this Good. is just uh, pausing the execution here, but not the thread. So in, in the meantime, the event loop can process other stuff. So the expected behavior now is we can execute it. We have to wait till the delay is over, but we don't get the, uh, exec, uh, the exception from Vertex. Yes, exactly. The exception that we saw before. Mm -hmm. So Because we are don't blocking the, the... Exactly. We don't block it. Main loop. Um, if we, again, if we need to call a blocking API, they are there. Um, then this would again block now the vertex event loop if you do it like this. Okay. Because this is a suspend function, mm -hmm. but we didn't don't suspend, we block the thread. Um, so this is bad. This would okay. uh, yield the exception again. Here we see it. Mm -hmm. So instead, what we can do is uh, if we have a suspend function where we need to do blocking stuff in there we can switch the context. We can say with context, and then there's uh, dispatchers, and then there's IO, for example. Mm -hmm. This is an IO thread pool, where you can do IO work that is blocking. And um, again, we use this here, then either you have to do it like that, or uh, remove it because it's the last statement in the block. And now this is not done on the on the works, vertex. Um, so when you call this function, then you switch to the IO mm -hmm. pool. It will be executed there. There we put a thread to sleep. And um, then when we leave this function again, we switch back to the old context to vertex again. So this again would work. Okay, we have to wait. Yeah, the Just five seconds. Five seconds. Yeah. You can also, oops. But you see here also no exception. Yep. And here we should get the result. The result. Perfect. Yeah. So now you have normal coroutines. You can switch around the context. Uh, you can do, if you need to do blocking work, you can do it on the IO thread. Mm -hmm. uh, if not, you can directly do it on the vertex event loop. Okay, cool. Yeah. So, yeah. That's it about how you get to Kotlin coroutines with the GRPC stuff that's currently not directly supporting it. Okay, nice.